Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today you join me in my new office. Although we're on a new setting, I'm still up to the same old stuff. So I've been trying to buy some cars for the forecourt because while I've been busy building this place, I've been a bit neglectful while I'm getting stock. And I'm finding it a bit tricky to be honest. There's been quite a kind of demand for cars at auction, I guess, and they're going for quite strong prices. But I did manage to buy one yesterday. I left a series of proxy bids on cars at BCA and one of the ones that I won behind book, which may potentially be a bit worrying, was a BMW M135i. I really like these cars. They're just a great fun hatchback. So I thought let's have a deeper dive into it, quickly have a look at it, the information we got on BCA, looking at it on vehicle score and we'll have a look at Auto Trader as well and see what potential profit we could have and then we'll go and get it picked up and see what it's like. This is the car, 2014 M135i. It has got 68 and a half thousand miles on it. Six owners, which a lot of people are gonna be like, oh my God, but it's 10 years old, six owners on a performance car. I don't think that's drastic to be honest. It says cap clean is 9,400. We'll get to what we paid for it in a minute. It's an automatic, which is what I prefer to be honest. Uh, I mean, manuals are nice and a lot of people are gonna like a manual, but auto for me. It does say that it only has one service record, digital service record. So we might have to do some digging around to get more service history on it. It's got MOT for about 11 months, which is pretty decent. I'll have a look at the MOT history in a minute. It's got an all clear BCA central report, which you know doesn't necessarily mean a lot. Also tells us that it's 2,620 pounds worth of optional extras. So let's check out what they were. The automatic transmission, which was 1,685 pounds. Metallic paintwork, because what is it? Esteril blue, isn't it? One of my favorite colors. Yeah, esteril blue there. 550 pounds, uh, heated front seats, 295 pounds. Rain sensor with automatic headlight activation, 90 pounds. That's a bargain, well worth having. So the total price when new was 32,730 pounds, including VAT. As I say, cat clean was £9,400 and it says retail was £11,395. I can see we've got some aftermarket skirts and bits and pieces on. We've got black kidney grills as well. I don't know if this one is like a shadow line or whatever they call it, but it's got all the blacked out bits anyway. Got black alloy wheels as well. Originally, I it might have been an option, but it didn't say it, did it? These would have been ferric grey and I may be tempted to have them powder coated back to ferric grey because I just think it make it look fresher and more original and nicer, but we will see. Like I say, we've got Maxton designs or something, uh, splitters and things on there. It looks in pretty good nick, generally speaking. Looks like we might have some kind of rear privacy glass, but not a very heavy tint on there. Inside looks pretty good. Looks reasonably clean, which is always good to see. Seat doesn't look too damaged. As I say, 68,000 miles. We've got no warning lights other than a seat belt and the handbrake being on, so we're not too worried about that. We've got the smaller sat nav unit, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, still got it. Heated seats. They are highlighting a few paint blemishes, so I think this rear bumper might have been painted because you can kind of see it flaking around the edges of the lights there. I have to admit, I didn't really pay too much attention when I was leaving the proxy bits. Maybe there's a color change. We'll have to check that out when we see it in person. The same again on the other side. So we might end up painting a bumper on this, which is gonna cost me about 300 quid. And powder coating the wheels will cost me another 300 quid. And what are the tires we've got? Potenzas, what are they? Bridgestones, aren't they? Bridgestone Potenzas, I think. So that's pretty good. A few chips on the windscreen, standard fast car stuff. Doesn't look too bad, really. So let's have a quick look at vehicle score. I ran this earlier, it tells us our score is 735, which is 74 above average. Most importantly on this, I wanna have a look at the MOT history. Let's have a look at the performance actually. 315 brake horsepower and 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. As you can see why I, I quite like these. Uh, MOT history, most recent one passed with no advisories. Prior to that, passed with quite a lot of advisories, which were brakes, brake, 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 brakes, and windscreen. Prior to that, it failed on tire, tire, brakes, 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 windscreen, and tire. So wear and tear items, nothing too crazy. And it looks like on this most recent one, they have sorted out all the brakes. So hopefully they've been done quite recently. Don't forget to use my code shift out of 20. If you are gonna do one of their checks, you'll get 20% off. If we have a look on Auto Trader, I've put in all the information. It tells us a 65 out of 100, which is actually 
pretty good for a hot hatch car. That's in terms of its retail rating, how popular it is within our area. It tells us that the retail valuation is £13,519. Part exchange valuation is £9,436. I don't think I said it yet, have I? I won this. I can't remember exactly what my proxy bid was, but I paid £9,200 plus the fees, which worked out to £9,621. So with that in mind and putting the price at around about 13,795, because I think we might be able to ask a little bit more. Um, there aren't any others of this same spec that we can see on AutoTrader. Uh, that would give us a 4,174 pounds potential gross margin before we've done our servicing, PDIs, paint the bumper, paint the wheels maybe, and whatever else it may need. So it could be a good buy, but only time will tell. We'll have to pick this car up and bring it back and see what it's like. Luckily for us, it is only down the road at BCA Bridgewater, so I'm gonna go and pick it up this afternoon and we'll give it a drive back and see what we've bought. Here we are once again, beautiful BCA Bridgewater. It looks all right, actually. It's almost a shame to redo the wheels because they're in good condition. Maybe I should do a, do you know what? I'm gonna take a picture right now and I'm gonna put a poll on Instagram whether we should leave the wheels black or go ferric gray, which is probably what they were originally. It's quite cool, isn't it? This seemed all right, so they probably have changed those brakes from the MOT advisories. Good tread on all the tires. Do we reckon it's got an aftermarket exhaust? I don't know actually, but they do sound quite fruity anyway, don't they? I don't. I quite like that and I don't. I know it's not genuine, so I just, a bit rubbish. Someone's very slim has been in here. This is the problem I have, look. Just for reference, every time I try and get in a car, when someone normal size has been in it, and I'll, like, <coughs> not very dignified. Quite muted, really. That's not even in sport mode. I don't know if sport mode actually makes a difference to the exhaust on these. I can hear the turbo fluttering. I think that's the wastegate, like fluttering. I don't know. Let's pop the bonnet and have a look. I think it's the wastegate. We'll see. It's funny how deceiving the photographs can be because the rear tint didn't look very dark at all, but that is completely like limo tint. I swear in the pictures you could see through, but that's just like a mirror. But all looks pretty good, Nick. Even our parcel shelf straps are in good nick. We've got some fairly newish but non-genuine mats. Oh. What have we got here then? Service. Is that the one service they were talking about? Another service. Another service. And another service. So while they said they only had one service on this, we've got at least five now because there's one digital one and these four in the boot they didn't know about. Someone knew about it at some point because there's a BCA bag thing and there's a nice BCA, uh, not BCA, a Ridgeway Hampshire BMW key tag. That's a bonus. Right, let's find out how it drives. I'm dead happy about those service receipts. 2021, 2018, 2017, 2022, and then it said digital. So I guess in the menu in here, don't know, but either way, we haven't got just one service history stamp now. We've got at least four, if not five. Let's find out. Oh, oh, just the seat a little bit. 
It's got heated wing mirrors. Stranger in some of these cars, the heated wing mirrors are on just like constantly, even like now when it's in summer. It did make taking off that sticker off the wing mirror much easier, but it seems a bit of a wasteful, weird thing to do. Air conditioning is absolutely freezing, which is good news. If it had a leak on one of the condensers, it wouldn't still be blowing cold like that. Strangely, I don't know if a lot of you have noticed with BMWs, because like the 7 Series that we've come in, it seems that even if you turn the temperature all the way up to like 50 degrees Celsius, if you've still got the air conditioning on, it still comes out freezing cold, which might sound like obvious, but you should be able to have warm conditioned air, I think. I could be wrong. We're nicely warmed up now. Should we put it into sport mode? See how we're boosting. In fact, sport mode, gearbox in sport mode. Let's see what it's saying. Right, second gear, man. Certainly still got some pep. I do like these cars. I think they're so much more interesting than an Audi S3 or something along those lines, a Golf GTI, even a Golf R. I mean, they're all sort of, what, 300 horsepower, Golf R, this, but this is rear wheel drive, six cylinder, just feels a bit more grown up in a sense. Wind noise is quite loud in here, but I don't know if that's something to do with the little add-on M3 style wing mirror caps. Are they just catching the wind and making a load of noise? I'm not sure. Otherwise though, Seems to drive straight enough, pulls well. Manual flappy paddles all work well. Problem with buying this sort of car from auction is you're always really paranoid and I'm trying to listen out for any noises and I'm going along, obviously got a lot of wind noise. I'm listening out to see, can I hear rattles at certain revs? It's kind of hard to tell because I've got to say the cabin noise is pretty strong in here, which is irritating because I'm trying to listen out to that engine. It's quite heavy traffic, so I haven't really had an opportunity to give it some good hard acceleration and just see how it goes. So I think when we get off the motorway, we'll try and, we've got a good section of national speed limit. We'll try and give it some good pulls and see how it sounds. Because it certainly feels well. Take it out of sport mode, put it back into comfort. Right, I'll create a bit of space in front, drop it down to third. Sounds pretty smooth. I kept thinking I could hear a bit of a rattle around about 3000 RPM, but I never really stayed there long enough for me to be here on the motorway. It's too loud to really be able to hear it, but if I put it into neutral. That doesn't sound very good, does it? I wonder if that could be an injector. I really hope it's something simple like an injector because it pulls really well. It doesn't rattle at any other time other than around about 3000 RPM. Could be chain. Can't, I don't really know what else it could be. There's definitely something there. I said we started off with a nice £4,000 margin, but I think we're definitely going to be eating into that. I don't know exactly, but I think if this is a timing chain or something more, you know, sinister, it will probably go to a BMW specialist and then my profit will be eaten up. It's the law of averages. You buy enough cars from auction, you are going to get stung on a few. Maybe, maybe it could be something simple, I don't know. I think we'll get back to the garage. Uh, when we're in stationary, we'll, we'll give it a rev, we'll have a listen to it, we'll get the mechanics to have a listen and see what they think. Really hard to tell. 
No. If it does it more on either run. If it's more on accelerating, I think. Right, if it's more on either run, then it's worse with a small end. And if it's uh, more accelerating, it's worse with like a big end or, yeah, or a follow up. So it's one kind of end. Yeah. Massive bell yeah. end. Yeah, a massive end. bell end, yeah. How involved is doing something like that? I guess we probably want to send it to a. Yeah. Take it apart, measure it, check it. Wonderbar, we'll try and find out who our BMW specialist is, I guess. There you go. Or just send it back send through it back. again. I would send it back because it's previews. Well, it's not, yeah, you don't get any kind of. It's, oh, it's not, I thought we did it. Was that BCA? You got? Depends which type, but it was only an essential check, I think. Uh, I, will, I will double check. All clear essential report. But then, um, you know, it doesn't. Engine running okay, engine smoking. We might put an email in. See, uh, see if we can take it back. What a shame. If not, we're gonna have to fix it. Be lumped with it. We'll reconvene when I have some answers for you. Right, so here we are down the farm with the BMW M135i with the Nokia engine. It's been down here now for a couple of months. We did park it down here while we were waiting on the RAC to come out and do an inspection on it, which they did. And the RAC engineer confirmed there's definitely something wrong with it. They checked to make sure that we hadn't swapped the engine or anything along those lines. And he said he would report back, but you know, I'd have to wait in here. Now, they've, I didn't really hear until I chased up again to say, is there anything happening with this? And they told me that, yeah, they've rejected my claim of wanting to put any kind of claim in. The mistake I made was that all this car had was an essential report, not an assured report. So if I had an assured report, I would have had 48 hours in order to be able to return the car and say, look, that wasn't on the report. Uh, I'd like you to either refund me or give me some kind of compensation for the problems I'm going to have to fix on it. But uh, it wasn't. It was just the essential report, which is, it's just for your information. They're not going to, there's no assurance with it whatsoever. So it's just tough titties really. I'm gonna to have to swallow either the repairs to have this fixed or get rid of it again. And I think probably when I bought this car around about two and a half months ago, I would have had about a 3000 pound margin in it, which would have been perfect, lovely, fine. But if I've now got to rebuild the engine, just rebuilding the engine, never mind having to replace the engine perhaps, uh, that would wipe out that profit. And I think I'd be losing money by trying to then retail it. And then I would have six months of worry of whether something else would happen with this car. So quite frankly, I don't see the point in doing that. I think this is one of those things where I'm gonna to have to be decisive, cut my losses and get rid of it. The only saving grace with this is that when they listed it, they listed it as only having one service with the car. And having checked it out myself, we found quite a bit more paperwork. So we should, be able to list it with a bit more paperwork at least and hopefully that will help our chances when it comes to selling it but only time will tell unfortunately i've had a bit of a run of bad cars especially from auctions um, which is making me value our cars bought for more purchases even more so if you are looking to sell your car let's say it's under 10 years old it's under 100,000 miles and you're within 100 to 150 miles of us then do head to the website fill out a form and i will try and give you the best price going because I can offer to pay you more when I'm not paying auction fees and when I'm not running the risk of buying something that could have hidden issues that I'm not able to check unless I'm doing it via our car buying service. I will leave it there and I will catch up with you when I have some information on how much this car sold for and how much money Burrow Motors has lost. Right, so in the end, we were going to send this back to auction, just, you know, take a, a loss on it quite a substantial one I thought but actually in my ringing around trying to find someone who is willing to work on one of these engines uh, someone was interested in buying it so we managed to do a deal that I feel actually really good about um, I did lose money but I feel like it could have been a lot worse so I ended up selling it for nine thousand pounds if you remember our bid was around about that plus fees so if I have a quick look on my dealer kit it stood us at nine thousand six hundred twenty one pounds so I've lost six hundred twenty one pounds and the time and possibly probably about 50 quid for loading it onto our stocking plan as well. But I was expecting to lose a couple of thousand pounds on this. Quite pleased with that end result really. And as far as expensive lessons go, 
Um, it was just expensive enough to teach me that I need to stop buying things with essential reports, just the assured report. I just really need to minimize risks at the minute um, because some of these losses are really hurting me. And in fact, some of you might remember that Audi RS4 that I bought at the same auction, funnily enough. Um, all good, loved it, we did a video on it, but it has just cost me £5,000 in warranty claims for a timing chain and one of the active shock absorbers that was about £700 on its own. So uh, that was, you know, like two and a half times how much I actually made on the car on that one. So minimising risks, that is the name of the game going forward um, and got away quite lightly on this one. So that is it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Not only will it really help us out, but I'm also giving away a £4,000 Tudor watch completely free as soon as we hit 100,000 subscribers. Don't forget to check out the Harley Davidson that I'm raffling off for just £1. If you want to spend 20 quid, you get 20 tickets plus an extra 10 for free. And it will help out a great cause as well. That is it for this time. Plenty more videos of my financial mistakes coming until I get this under control. So I'll see you for the next one.